we honor our associate pastor. Amen. Amen. Pastor Jay and she interpreted an awesome job closing out our faith and film from last week. Amen. Amen. And notice she spoils y'all. Every time she comes, y'all get out at 12.30. I come by 12.30, y'all looking at me and little cross. So, I can't make no promises today. But uh, we'll do the best we can. Amen. Is that all right? It is Independence Weekend. And it simply represents freedom. And so I want to talk to you from the theme of absolute freedom. Absolute freedom. Freedom. Again, no screens today, so you'll get to write and all of that on your own today, but you did it for many, many years. So I think we'll be okay. I think we'll be okay. Amen. The Bible um, we're reading from today is John 8. We're going to pull our topic from the 36th verse, but allow me to read 31 through 36 in your listening. While you're getting that on your mode, technology or your device or your Bible, Man, I know two people who will always have a Bible. That's Mother Bragg and Deacon Young. Yeah. Amen. They say, y'all can flip on those screens all you want to, but it's nothing like turning those pages. Amen. I think Minister Eric has joined them as well. Amen. Here in those pages, nothing like it. John 8, 31 through 36. I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. Amen. But whatever version you have, whether it's NIV or King James, just read alone. Amen. When you have that, say amen. amen. Oh, you sound good, Bible readers. And the word of the Lord says, so Jesus said to the Jews who had, been, who had believed him, if you abide in me, oh my word, you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. They answered him, we are offsprings of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is enslaved to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. Mm -hmm. So our focus, 36, so if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Oh, that's some good stuff right there. Tell your neighbor, he who the son sets free is free indeed. You don't have to wait on somebody else to release you. You don't have to wait on the organization to release no you. Way, no way. You don't have to wait for certain things to happen in your life. No the sun sets free yeah. yes. is free <laughs> indeed. Yeah. Father, thank you for your word, for it is amazing. Yeah. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. Mm -hmm. And thank you that it's full of promises by which we can stand. Father, thank you for the simplicity of the reminder today that when you set us free, we are free Indeed. Father, help us to receive and embrace the freedom that you died to give us. Thank you that we are released into our destiny and we are no longer bound. Thank you, God, for all that you are to us. Thank you for all that you've called us to be. And thank you that we shall walk therein. Now continue to be rich in our presence today, and we'll continue to glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You may be seated again for a topic today. Absolute freedom. When you look at the word freedom, you look at the ability to be released from bondage, or you're in a state of liberty. Uh, means that you are no longer oppressed and you are no longer in bondage. If you ask someone else what is freedom, they'll say to do what I want to do, when I want to do it, how I want to do it. Can't nobody tell me nothing. Well, I can't argue that. I think both of those represent a position of freedom. 
but with freedom in order to have absolute freedom. Absolutely. You have to have an understanding of what that is. I love in this particular passage, and oftentimes we will just read the one where we took our focus from, 36, that whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And that is powerful. But it's good when you can read it in context. And so this is why I read the, the ones right before, because it talks about people who saw themselves as being free, but they were really bad. Really bad. Right. Can I help you understand today that freedom is really about choice of making a decision. And so when you understand that, then you can embrace what God has given us. I love that we live in America. I love that each July the 4th we pause and we thank God for our freedom and we celebrate those who have gone before us, who have fought for our freedom, that over oh, 243 years ago on July 4th, they signed the Declaration of Independence and you know with that it said that we had liberty. We were free to be all that we were destined to be from the beginning. That these rights were life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness. What well, can I tell you? A piece of paper cannot bring the full experience of freedom. Yes, it can sign and say this is what we're to have. But if we don't embrace freedom, we can live with no chains and still be bound. We can live outside of prison walls and still be back. So to a degree, we have freedom because of what others died to give us. But there was a freedom that was ushered in over 2,000 years ago. Now I understand again that there was a signing in two, uh, 243 years, but over 2,000 years ago. There was a man named Jesus Paint the picture. who died for our sins Paint it. and he ushered in absolute freedom for us to be everything that he said we could be. He was the only one powerful enough only one. to break the bonds of sin. Only one. See, because sin is a tricky thing. Tricky, tricky. Sin will take you further than you want to go. Oh, here it is. And it'll cost you more than you want to pay. Sin will take you on a downward spiral. It will make you question how did I end up here? How did I get here? But the awesome thing about what happened over 2,000 years ago, if you put your hand in his hand, if you put your life in him, you don't have to wonder, how did I get in this place? You can live in a place that ushers in freedom. So that was the purpose for you to be free, for you to be released, for you to be liberated, to be what God said you can be. You know, each and every day in the garden, Adam and Eve have a choice. God told them, don't touch this, don't touch that, but you can do this, you can do this, you can do this. And every day they have a choice to obey or disobey. Freedom means you have a choice to obey or disobey. You have a choice to live well or live bound. You have a choice to follow what God says or take a detour. But it's up to you. I always tease my children and I say, my job is to instruct you, but I can't really make you do anything. When you leave my presence, I don't know what you do. Because I tell you, and this is the path I have for you, but you have this thing that God put in all of us and it's called our will. And we have the will to decide to live in a free space or live in bondage. You know, I was reading the story, and it was about this, uh, her name is Kira uh, Malcolm, and she was a missionary in the Philippines, and she had been taken into captivity in World War II. And so she was in this camp, and they were given numbers, and that's who they were, and so all of those that were in captivity would meet at night and pray secretly for God to set them free. Mm -hmm. 
And they would come every night and pray, God set us free. God set us free. She said, but she noticed during the day they were living in a way that wasn't in the pattern of the way God would happen to them. But they would still gather and pray for God to set them free. She said what she noticed was freedom became the object and not God. She noticed that they spent so much time praying for freedom that they didn't spend time acknowledging God. And she said she stopped going to the meetings and she started getting in her Bible. And she started praying on her own. And then she came to a revelation that really freed her. She said her prayer became, God, if you never release me from the camp, free me in my mind. Free me in my mind. Free me in my mind. If I have to live out the rest of my days in this camp, don't let my mind be in bondage. Can I say to us today, that's why I started with the phrase, there are a lot of people walking around free, but they're bound. Amen. Bound in their thinking, yes. bound in their emotion, Good. bound in their spirit, yes. cannot yes. excel to what God has called them to be. I don't care how much oil we put on you. I don't care how much we tell you to turn around. If you don't allow your mind to be transformed yes. and God to free you, you will look free living back. God said he doesn't want us to look the part. He wants us to be the part. Yes, yes. There's nothing like being what you look like. Because we've mastered this facade. They'll ask you, how you doing, honey? I'm free. And your conversation is bound from the time you leave the door to the time you arrive. What does it sound like? I don't know if God's going to do it. I don't know if I'm going to make it. You know, my family died from this. You know, we ain't never had no money. All of that is bondage. You spend time talking about your life before Christ. And that if people knew, honey, they wouldn't even talk to me. That is bondage. The enemy tries to run the guilt games on us. He tries to run the you not good enough game. All of that stuff was washed away at Calvary. Away. But can I tell you, if you never grasp it, it is never yours. That's why partial freedom or just natural freedom, that's good to a degree. But when you get free here, yeah. when you release everything that tries to hold you hostage, can I tell you one of the most freeing things is to look at somebody that knows me and you no good and you love them anyway. To be able to listen to somebody run you down in the ground and you still have a sincere God bless you. That's what freedom really is. Freedom is if you know you don't have everything you want, you're still grateful because you serve a God that meets your needs. That's what absolute freedom is. Where do you get that? There's only one place. You get it in Christ. You get it when you connect with him in relationship. When you read the text, the Bible said you had these uh, religious people and Jesus was able to see through their position. He says, when you believe on me, then you're free. Because the truth, which I am, will set you free. They got an attitude. Right. Uh, in case you hadn't heard Jesus, we are the seed of Abraham. Seed of Abraham. We don't know nothing about no bondage. We ain't nobody's slave. Jesus said, let me help you. If you bow to sin, you are a slave. You may not be answering to anybody physically, but in the spirit, you are yielding yourself to ways that are not like God. Now, I know we don't like talking about sin much, especially on Freedom Day. Right, right. But if you really want freedom, yeah. if you really want to walk in all that God has called you to walk in, yeah. you cannot walk in total freedom and sin at the same time. Right. You cannot be his and the enemies at the same time. He said you can't be double-minded. You got to be hot. Oh, you gotta be cold. But I don't do nothing warm. I said earlier, freedom is a choice. It's a decision. And you can't do middle. You have to choose to obey, or you gotta choose to disobey. You gotta choose light, or you 
choice. You have to make a decision. Nothing keeps you up late at night than trying to straddle the fence. Nothing disrupts your mind more than trying to act like God on Sunday and look like the imp on Monday. Joshua said, choose ye this day, this, this day. whom you will serve. Yes. And then I love, he said, but as for me and my house. See, the problem is we stopped speaking for our house. I don't care that my daughter's 20. When you walk in my house, I have a, a responsibility to speak over your life. I don't care that my son is 16 and a half. Oh, please give him his half. <laughs> but when you walk in my house, I have a responsibility to pray over you. So when I'm praying at night, I don't just pray for me. I say, God bless me and bless my house. God touch me and touch my house. You know, I love the pattern that Job said. Job was a righteous man. And the Bible said that Job, when he would thank God for his stuff and when he would pray for himself, he also took time to pray for his grown kids. Yeah. Grown he kids. said, Father, if there's anything if there's that shouldn't be taken out, take it out. Father, cover them. Father, bless them. Can I tell you why you being free? Be free to cover your children. Be free to cover your family. I don't care if y'all just got through fighting. Say, Lord, bless my husband. Lord, bless my wife. Lord, bless my children. And then talk to the devil. And devil, by the way, you better back that thing on up. You will not have my children. You will not have my home. You will not have my family. That's absolute freedom when you walk in the power and the authority that God has given you. Because when you're not free, you act scared. Not scared. Not scared. Because freedom brings an awareness of who you are. Yes. That's why sometimes when inmates transition into the world, just unlocking the door doesn't make them free. You have to have a mind transfer. Mind transfer. You know, I know they used to have that little saying that says, Oh, let me find it because I wrote it in there. I just think it is so cute that in the natural that we have formed, it says that the natural uh, forms us, sin deforms us, education informs us, but only Christ transforms us. Ah, Some people become educated, but they're not transformed. Some people, the door has been opened, but they're not transformed. You know that story they used to tell you about the little dog they put on the chain and they would sit some meat just right, a little bit right, out in front of him and right. he couldn't get to it because the chain would yank him back. But they finally took the chain off and left the meat and they freed him and he had quit. He said, I already know how this don't look. Because <laughs> every time I get there, there's a chain that's pulling me back. See, it's not your physical that the enemy's trying to in, uh, put in body. It's your mental that he's trying to mental. put in body. Because so a man think is talk holy ghost, so is he. If you don't ever think you can have better, you will never have better. Right. If you don't ever think you can do what God says you can do, you will never do what he says you can do. But once you get a belief system, once you know that you're who God says that you are, once you stand on the promises, I don't care if you don't have a two pennies, you'll start talking like a million. I don't care if they pronounce sickness on your body. You'll start walking like you healed. I don't care if everything around you is fragmented. You'll start acting like you whole. Because I'm not going to act like I what I've been in. I'm going to respond to what I'm going to. That's what freedom is. So what? You bold and can't nobody tell you what to do. If you're living in sin. If you're walking in disobedience. If he is not your Lord, you enslave to somebody. Because you don't get to live out what he said. Because you're too busy bowing to what he said. But when you come into the knowledge, say come into the knowledge. You know, people abused that years ago when people would try to live certain, leave certain denominations and say, honey, I've come into the light. No. Because when you really come into the light, you would understand it's not about denomination anyway. It's about relationship. Denominations give us a place to identify, but relationship give us a place to be liberated. And sometimes we confuse our connection with our freedom. 
And so coming into the light, he said that you have to know the truth. He said, religious people, y'all sitting up there living like you think you know it all. Like you think you got it going on. But you struggling with believing in me. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the light. Yeah. I was reading a story the other day of somebody that's atheist and he was talking about there is no God and y'all don't even know and y'all being deceived. And so a man who had just gotten saved came to the front of the room and said, I have something to ask you. And, uh, the professor said, what is it that you want? And the man started eating an orange. He said, nobody got time for that. The man started peeling it, peeling it and peeling it. And then he ate it. And so he asked the professor, he said, now was my orange sweet or was it sour? Uh -huh. The professor said, I don't know, I'd have to taste it. He said, my point is that. Don't be pushing against God if you haven't tasted him. Because the Bible said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. That's why when you preach, people talk all that crazy stuff, but you know better. You tasted him. You know that he's good. When people yeah. tell you you're not going to be well, you know that you serve the healer. When people tell you you're not going to get out of it, you know that you serve a God who's your deliverer. When you know better, you do better, and when you do better, you exercise freedom, free and last, free and last. Thank God Almighty, I'm free and last, and I bow to your opinion, and I bow to your boundaries. Who the Son sets free is free and deep, free and last, oh, free and last. I'm free. High five your neighbor, tell him I'm free. Say, don't get it twisted. Don't label me by my situation. Label me by my relationship. See, they gonna attack your outside. But can't nobody touch this. Can't touch my mind. How do people raise out of negative situation? Because they don't allow their minds to be taken captive by what they're in. Tell your neighbor, if my mind had its way, if my mind had its way. I would be crazy. I would See, we don't like to admit that. Y'all know we were on, on the verge of cuckoo. But God. I'm just looking for a few but God people in the house today. They know you've been through some things. And you should be doing as well as you're doing. But I know God. I'm trying to finish my notes. But this what happened when you're free. You don't care about nothing. You say, God, I know you're going to work it out. God, I know you're going to take care of me. It may not look like you right now, but I serve a God who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all I can ask of him. You bless him. Say, should have been. Should have been. Should have been. Could have been. Could have been. So, um, yeah. So, when you're absolutely free, does not mean the enemy is not going to try to shut you down. But he can't win over someone he doesn't control. Can't win. Can't win. That's why you don't have no need to be scared of the curses of the enemy. Talk about it. He can't curse. Amen. What God's redeemed. Okay, thank you. It was back in the day, some lady got real mad at me and she was like, ooh. I said, girl, bye. <laughs> Doesn't mean that you don't have any power. But I serve the one who is all powerful. And that's why there are three things. I'm not going to get a chance to visit all of them, but please understand there are three, three. Christians are free from the bondage of sin. And I'm not talking about when you make a mistake or whatever, but living in sin, you don't have to do that. Look at your neighbor and say, you don't have to do that. <laughs> because when it says that you're enslaved or you're in sin, it says that you're slave to something or someone. It just means that you yielded. That's why I even served notice on you today. If things have been rough and things have been challenging and you just threw up your hands and said, what the use? Put them back down. Go back and say, God, you know what? Even though I don't like this or understand this, but I commit myself to you. I yield to you because that's where the real freedom is. Don't let the enemy sell you whoop tickets Amen. and make you think that life is better without Christ. That's a bold-faced lie. Everything is better with him. 
Yes, it is. So you don't have to do that. You know, back in the day, I remember, and I'm going to tell my age, but anybody remember uh, Flip Wilson? Yeah. I used to love that show. So y'all don't know what real TV is, but he used to have this phrase that said, the devil made me do it. I want you to know we had some real watching. The devil made me do it. Anything that he did that he shouldn't have, he said, the devil made me do it. Sometimes we look at that and try to use that and the devil made me do it. Can I tell you the devil may, cannot make you do anything. Here's what he does. He presents opportunity. Yeah. 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 I'm going to teach it here. I feel like taking off but I want to teach. No. He can't make you do anything. But he presents opportunity. And you have the choice that you have to make. You have to choose. Do I accept this opportunity and fall back in an old lifestyle? Or if you have not been converted, stay in that lifestyle. Because sin was never God's intention for us, for us from the beginning. Amen. It was never his intention. But sin came. That became then the world. And so he sent Jesus to reestablish the kingdom of God on this earth. And that's why we are kingdom citizens. That's why sin is not part of our journey. He said, so I free you from it. So you're not contaminated by it. And therefore your productivity is limited. He says, but when I free you, when you step back into the truth of who you are. See, because the devil puts up a, a shield, a facade. Of who we are. He created us to have no limits. That we can be everything. I know you get tired of me saying this. But I need people to understand. Amen. You can be all that God said you can be. Amen. Can I talk about me flying again? Can I tell y'all that's the most <laughs> exhilarating experience. For y'all who didn't catch me go on Facebook. I jumped out the plane. I went skydiving. Yes. Now here's what some people do. Some people tag me and say, oh, that is really cute. You get the I fly. Oh, you will not minimize my experience. <laughs> because I fly is when man sets up something to make you think you skydive. <laughs> but there is no substitute for the real thing. God is trying to get some of y'all out of I fly oh <laughs> into skydive. Some of y'all just have enough nerve to be what man says you can be. Ooh. But there is a God that is trying to elevate you to what he said you can be. I figured if I'm going to be nervous, I might as well be nervous in the real thing. Ain't no need of faking a flight. I might as well do the real thing. So I got up in the airplane and I was talking real big. And they strapped us and did all of that. So I had watched the video and the video said that at any time if you feel unsure, just lean and tell your instructor, I'm not ready yet. So he was pushing me and he said, Cheryl, we getting ready to go? I'm like, yes, we're ready. The closer I got to the door, the more it became real. Though they opened the door, you felt all that. And so all I started practicing from that point on was I'm not ready. All of my boldness and faith that I had in the back seat yeah. left me when I got to the front seat. And because I felt the elements, my mind started changing. I'm helping us in here right here. Yeah. Because in January, we cool. Right. God's going to do it. God's going to turn it around. This is my year. This is my season. And by April, well, God still has enough time to do what he said. But by June, it's a wrap. And we don't even finish out 2019. We now start planning for 2020. I was in the store the other day, and they were already putting out things that relate to 2020. Helping us to dismiss the rest of 2019. That's because we come from the back seat to the front. So I'm in there that they open the thing, and my instructor said, "Are we ready?" I said, "Yes," and I started practicing. I had the look. 
I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready yet. But what I did not know is that my instructor was not a fan of giving people that chance. <laughs> my instructor goes by the motto, when you're strapped up, you told me you were ready. When you strapped up, when you join the army of the Lord, God's not going to keep saying, are you ready? Are we ready to go? But he tell you, I've got great things for you. I'm going to make you the head and not the tail. I'm going to put you above and not beneath. But sometimes you will have to jump with that warning. Sometimes you will have to experience some things. And I'm not going to give you a chance to get out. Because I know what's waiting on you on the other side. Mm. So they didn't tell me that was his motto. And so he said, Cheryl, you ready? I said, yes. Well, by the time I turned my head to tell him, he took his leg. He said, and here we go. <laughs> and I got out. And the first thing I thought was, I can't breathe. <laughs> and you know what God said to me? Really? You go through all you went through to get here. And the first thing you can think of is you can't breathe. I kept you through some stuff. Talk about it. Talk about I let you get to this place. Yeah. I let you have enough nerve to buckle up. Enough nerve. I let you get enough strength to board the plane. And I give you everything you need. Not just to soar, but to land safely. Right. And you invite fear mm. on this amazing ride. Invite, invite fear. I'm going to help us in here. That's the reason God won't give us an unforgettable experience. Because we have fear packed in our bag. Right. And it weighs heavier than our faith. Because it doesn't mean that fear won't be present. But it shouldn't be greater than your faith. Yeah. God said when you jumped out, your first thing should have been, God, I trust you. Yeah. But the first thing you thought was, I'm scared. Mm. He said, so now I guess you're going to start calling me in a panic. Mm. I said, no, not for $386. <laughs> so the videographer, she was in front of me. She said, just enjoy. She said, you came this far. Enjoy. Isn't it amazing that her words were more powerful than God's words in my ear? See, I tell her myself, some of y'all, honey, I hear from God. Because he was talking to me and I was still a little shaky. But when she said, enjoy, you come this far, enjoy, I started thinking of all the other things my $386 could have done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I started thinking about the two years of my life of transition and how God kept me. I started thinking about how God protect my children every day. I started thinking about the dreams that he's given me. I started thinking about all of God's goodness. And then I started thinking that God is not done with me yet. Right. So this is not going to kill me. Right. It's just meant to give me an unforgettable experience. Right. Because even when you know God is great, it's something about skydiving that make you know he's really great. Really? So I started thinking, and then I was like, yes, this is amazing. Yes, this is awesome. And so we got up there and we started sewing. He told you, pull the thing down after we got through all that. He said, now pull this string. And it was really going fast. And I pulled the string and then everything just settled. He said, isn't it amazing that we can be in the midst of all of that stuff going on and not be touched by a thing? God said, all I'm trying to show you, Cheryl, is what I'm able to do in your life. Just because stuff is around you does not mean that it has to get in you. Amen. That when you are the way that I want you to be. Yes. Oh God, I'm going to take off of here, but I'm trying to stay right here. Don't do it. When you Take's understand off. who I really am, can I tell you long membership in church does not mean you understand who God really is. 
just because you shout and run doesn't mean you really Amen. understand who God is. Amen. Understanding who he is is when you know you can't control nothing yeah. and yeah. you're still in his hand. Yeah. Yeah. Knowing who he really is is knowing that he won't leave you or forsake you. Understanding who he really is is that I'm not my past, but I'm everything he spoke about me from my yeah. present. Knowing who he really is is when you hear nothing but negative around you and you still see the positive that God said in. When you know who he really is, you're not moved about all of the things around you. So we got ready to land. He said, you ready to go in? I said, no, let's stay. He said, all good things must come to an end. He said, but it's not just your flight. It's also how you land. He said, because you can have this good experience and don't land right. He said, you can break something landing if you don't land right. He said, so just like you listened in the air, you have to listen when we're coming in. He said, do what I tell you and you'll be all right. Go against my orders and you're subject to be injured, but it's at your expense. I said, wait a minute. If something happened to me, you're not going to be responsible. He said, mm -mm. He said, I'm only responsible for those that obey my instruction. He said, the moment you choose not to obey, you have taken things into your own hands. Why did I tell y'all that story? Number one, for those of y'all that's not on Facebook yet, you didn't know. Number two, God is responsible to take care of us. When we follow his orders, yes, yes. God said, I have unforgettable experiences in front of you. That's why I died to free you so you can have everything I said you can have. That's why I say stop letting people make you think that living this life for God is a boring life. And it doesn't lead to anything. It's the best life you could ever have. Yeah. To know that if you die just in case you don't wake up, you wake up in the arms of Jesus. Yeah. Just knowing that when your security system fails, God won't fail. Just knowing when things hit your life, he is able to take you through. It's the best thing Ever. You don't have to be bound to anything that is not like God. Yes. You submit yourself to him. You submit yourself to his way. And then you can have what he said you can have. Yeah. You can do what he said you can do. You can be what he said you can be. You can be absolutely yeah. free. He said that's what I'm calling you to. He says, so you don't have to be bound. You've been freed from the price of sin. Because he paid, he said, the wages of sin is dead. And John, but the gift of God is eternal life. You don't owe for that. You have been released from the price of sin. And finally, I'm done. You've been released from the guilt of sin. Thank you, Lord. Stop going back revisiting that. I wish I had not, but you did. I wish this was different, but it's not. And do you stay in that? Or do you stand in the liberty that God has called you to? I posted something the other day about my freedom. I'm telling you, your life is worth fighting for. Amen. Decide, I am going to do what God has called me to do. That I'm going to be who he's called me to be. Maybe you're not going to jump out of this and do that and that, but be the best you you can be yes. every day. And the fight is that you will have to keep doing it. Sometimes you think that things are done and that's all but somebody will go scuba diving. Somebody will bring something else up. Something else will happen. But he says, remember, who the sun sets free. It's free indeed. Amen. Tell your neighbor, I love you, but I'm not in bondage to you. I choose to live the way he said. Absolute freedom, salvation, walking in love, 
walking in what he says is possible, that's absolute freedom. When the enemy comes, you can resist him, the Bible says. And I say again, it doesn't mean we won't stumble, doesn't mean we won't make mistakes, but you don't have to live there. Validation is for parking. Amen. When somebody say, you ain't got to keep trying to figure, uh-uh, no. Free yourself today. Don't just let the fourth be about barbecue and cookout. Let it be about a way of escape. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. He said, I died to release you from all curses, curses of sickness, curses of poverty, all the curses that the enemy brings to the earth. But he said, you have to want it and you have to accept it. Yeah. You know, I tell all my stories because y'all don't like to tell y'all, y'all know about this mom that's been hurting. Can I tell y'all, this arm has not hurt no nothing in three months. Amen. Sometimes we don't want to testify because then we think it'll come back. Ain't nobody got time for that. I went back to the doctor. She said, all that stuff that was in there, it's all cleared up. I said, of course it is. Of course it is. Because I was expecting that even while it was hurting. Yeah, I was expecting. See, if pain is still there, it doesn't mean you're not free. That's it. What determines whether you're free is what comes out of your mouth. Yes. Yes. That's good. It's what you walk in. That's what free indeed is. On the days you don't feel like you saved, but you know you ask him to come into your life. Yeah. Don't you let the devil try to fool you and make you think that you're not the redeemed. I am the redeemed. And I don't care what it feels like today. I know that I'm saved. As a pastor, been in the years, the enemy is still trying to come with something. And I have to get an attitude with him. Boy! I know I'm saying. Now I may have cussing on my mind. Uh, on my mind. On my mind. Uh, Y'all don't want to act like oh God right now. Oh, yeah. I may have cussing on my mind. So true. But I know that I've been redeemed. Yeah. I know that God has saved me. Yeah. I may not can think of all this stuff, out, but what I do know is that I have been redeemed. I have been set free. I have been transformed. And I will have what he says I will have. So God, just teach me how to wait. You tell your neighbor, that's absolute freedom. I'm done. I'll finish it later. That's what freedom is. Stand to your feet.